All right, thank you so much, Amanda, and hello and welcome everyone. We're really glad to have you here with our Dora community today. And I have to say I'm uh, extremely excited that we have Dr. Nicole Forsgren joining us. Uh, I've known uh, Nicole for many, many years and have had the opportunity to work together with her at at least two companies. Um, and uh, you all probably know Nicole, uh, you know, she was the beginning of Dora. And in fact, is is the author at least the lead author for Accelerate, the book that we all know and love. So, Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today and, and sharing with us a little bit about space. Uh, I'm going to hand things right over to you uh, to take it away. Sure. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for um, continuing the community and all of the discussions. Uh, Nathan is wonderful. And like he said, we have had a chance to work together a couple of places. He was actually my manager for a, for a bit at Chef when I first uh, came back into industry after being in academia. He's, he's pretty dope to work with. So, um, and thank you so much everyone for joining. I'm, I'm so grateful you all uh, could find some time to join us today. So the plan today is to kind of run through uh, a little bit about Dora and space and how they relate or, you know, maybe don't. So let me see if I can share TVD. Right now I juggle between so many video conferencing systems. I think everybody can see it. How are we doing? Looks great. Fantastic. Today's a win. Okay. So now we'll also see if I can change. So I'm Nicole. Um, I did some stuff in tech and then I decided to do some research. Um, and now I continue to uh, do some tech, do some research, um, advise companies on how to do tech better and especially how to use some metrics to make sure that we are not just taking giant blind gambles and jumps into the abyss. Um, I also love Diet Coke tacos and ice cream. So um, I like to always mention that DevOps was really I like to joke the original hipster for making work both more productive and sustainable, right? Sometimes when I'm talking to executives, I like to tell them that, you know, this is the way that we can get more profitability, um, better customer outcomes, because, you know, sometimes that's what they need to hear and they need to be reassured of when they're making investments in technology. But really this was originally started as a way to make work better for us. And I think that's really important to keep in mind but it's also really interesting to call out this word productivity, right? Because productivity has always been at the heart of DevOps. We haven't always called it that, right? Because sometimes productivity feels like this really bad word, right? Because it feels like someone's just trying to like squeeze more blood out of a rock. But that's what makes it more sustainable for us, right? That's what helps us get more work done so that we can go home to our families or we can go home and play some video games or we can have ways of getting enough done without just grinding ourselves into the ground. So let's do a quick review of Dora, right? Um, what's it for? Benchmarking, right? We've got this for metrics, we're fine, we can just walk away. So actually no, <laughs> right? Uh, a lot of times people like these four metrics, the you know, the, the two speed, the two stability metrics, or you know, we had that fifth that uh, availability, reliability metric. It can be nice, it can be convenient, it can be handy, but you know, then the joke is there's like the whole rest of the book that you know I'm I'm sure many folks here in the community are familiar with. But really what it is is Dora is a framework, right? It is this research program and it's a framework that allows us to do many things, right? It helps us improve our outcomes. It helps us to measure our performance. And I think it's also really important to think about and realize that it really identifies capabilities for improvement and provides us a evaluative criteria. And by that, I mean uh, the research program that we used used this psychometric framework that told us, right? So like if we use this constraints-based model that tells us that to improve our speed and stability, we need to improve, you know, automated testing or CI, what that means so that as we diagnose our systems and then build our own tools or just like to buy something else, what pieces we need to do and what practices we needed to do in order to make that work and to work effectively. So now, you know, I'm going to kind of tradition or, or transition, you know, into space and 
and what is space and, and what are these space metrics? Um, and you know, what's it for? You know, is it this one set of metrics for everything? And close, right? Not quite. This paper that we wrote, um, it's available on ACM, and I, you know, I'll in include this link. Uh, oh, Nathan's got it for me, thank you. We provide this framework to help us think through some things, and we did include a table because as we were writing the paper, we realized it helped us kind of think through and differentiate between what these five dimensions are. But it's not just a set of metrics. It is also a framework that helps us think about how to measure productivity or really any type of complex creative work in ways that are holistic and balanced. So what is this whole space and Dora thing? So space and Dora really are complementary. And one way that we can think about how they work together is that as we use DORA, DORA, yes, you can use those four measures, five measures to understand how well you're doing. I like to think of these in terms of signal and action. The, the DORA 4 tells us how well we're doing. That gives us our signal. And then we need to drive into action. Using a constraints-based approach, we can say, what are the actions I need to take to help me improve in the most effective way possible? And then as we think about tracking those improvements over time or measuring those improvements, many times people come to me and they say, well, how should I measure this? What's the best way to measure it? Many times that answer is it depends, right? What does your infrastructure look like? What does your platform look like? What does your context look like? What measures and data are available to you today? And what measures and data might be available to you in six months or a year as you start investing in your instrumentation and your telemetry? Space can help you think through that, right? Once you've identified the capabilities you want to improve using DORA, you can use the space framework to identify how you want to measure this in ways that are holistic, that won't necessarily like break your system, right? Because if we just grab the easy ones like, like action metrics or activity metrics, right? The ones that are super easy to measure, sometimes that can end up leading to unintended consequences. So, a little bit more here. What is space? It is complementary to DORA. It is not an evolution of DORA. And by that I mean, like, we don't just need to, like, ignore DORA and move past it. They have different, different purposes, right? They each serve their own purpose. It is, space is a framework that helps us identify metrics that are appropriate for a situation or a goal, right? It can be used many different places. It is not a set of prescribed metrics. It's a framework that helps us think about how we want to identify and evaluate metrics for inclusion in what it is we want to do. It is much more broad than DORA, right? DORA was a specific research program for DevOps. I will say I've had folks contact me and say, this was really interesting. It helped me think through things. I've had doctors. I had an orthopedic surgery to book and say, this actually was really interesting. It helped me in my operating room. That one technical chapter didn't make any sense to me. I had to skip it, but the rest of it was interesting. Space, however, we wrote the paper in the context of developer productivity because grounding it made it easier to read. But I've even heard of copywriters in Hollywood using it to think through how they could be more effective or how their teams could be more effective. So it's much, much more broad. Now, what is the space framework? Uh, I see this question, yeah. Space is pretty close, probably like it to measure what matters, right? And how do we know what to measure? So since I sat and talked about all of these, what is space? Space is an acronym, which helps me. <laughs> Hopefully you remember what it is. So we've got five dimensions. S is satisfaction. Now, it, it's how fulfilled, happy, and healthy one is. So it could be how, satisfied you are in general or how satisfied you are with in this case we're talking about developer productivity an engineering system how satisfied you are with the tools p is performance this is going to be the outcome of something how well something worked a is activity this is going to be a count count of just about anything c is communication and collaboration it's how something works and talks together it could be people now this could be systems right so this could be the searchability of a code base uh, An E is efficiency and flow, right? So this is how well things work together. This could be perceived productivity, right? I'm sure um, we've heard or, you know, we've thought about 
if I could get into the flow, if I've been in the flow, right? Sometimes when we're working in really complex code, we get into the flow. If we're video gaming, we get into the flow, right? Sometimes we just get into the flow and like things just kind of disappear and we get work done. This can also be the flow through the system, right? How many handoffs we have. Uh, the opposite might be how many interruptions we have, right? Now, you may have also noticed that some of these are very, very related, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that when we measure things, we pull from at least three different dimensions and we keep things in tension or in balance. Now, a good example here is when we think about uh, code review. Sometimes I've heard of folks say that we want to have the shortest code review time possible. And so we will just alert people all the time. But if we do that, then we will interrupt code authoring time, right? How often you're coding. And so keeping those two in tension, right? What's the appropriate balance now? Some of this will be, it depends, right? But like, that's a good example of the, these two metrics being in tension. So there's not always going to be the perfect answer or the right answer, but that's the idea of having two that are in tension. Now, there are many examples here of where we can apply space. And one thing to keep in mind is that when we do space or space metrics, right, this isn't like a bingo card where we want to play blackout, right? Or we just pick random metrics and then we've got space. We want space for something. Here's an example of space for incident management. And in this case, I've included examples for several things select as appropriate, right? So if we have satisfaction and well-being, it could be how satisfied SREs are with the incident management process, or perhaps with escalation and routing, or with on-call metrics. For performance, these types of metrics could look at system reliability or the monitoring system's ability to detect and flag issues. Now here, we look at activity. Anything that's a count here is going to work, right? Number of incidents created, number of incidents resolved, uh, you could also look at distributions, right? The severity distribution and account for each. When we look at communication and collaboration, right? The people resolved in the incident, what their communication patterns look like. Um, you could look at completeness. Uh, you could look at the percentage of incidents and incidents resolved that reference guides and documentation, right? How do the communication and the collaboration structures help with this? And then as we look at efficiency and flow, this is where it could be really interesting. For example, how many hops did it take to get to the right person to solve it, right? So here's an example for incident management. Now, I've included another one. What if we look at applying space to testing, right? How satisfied testers are with the tools available for them for testing. Um, how satisfied they are with test times. How satisfied they are with testing support and visibility. We can also look at uh, performance, right? Here we're looking at performance testing and reliability, test sweet times, test flakiness. Um, activity here, number of issues caught by tests, number of tests run, number of tests that have run successfully. Um, you could also run those by severity. Um, here, communication and collaboration, right? The test documentation that describes tests to run and automated tests, how often that documentation is accessed. Um, anything similar to that. And then for efficiency and flow, maybe number of times a test suite is run before it's completed successfully. Um, how many times you have to return to a test suite that's been run successfully, but it didn't actually work, right? Um, how, time, how much time you spend fixing test failures. Uh, maybe how often a failed test suite actually interrupts your work, okay? By the way, DORA is actually an instantiation of space for software delivery, turns out, right? So lead time is efficiency and flow because it's a time from code commit to code running and production. Deploy frequency is activity, right? Because it's a number of times you deploy. MTTR is efficiency and flow because it's time that you spend fixing, right? It's a time to restore. And then change fail rate is performance, right? That's an outcome measure. And because the criteria is, the, right, the recommendation is to have metrics that cross at least three of those five dimensions for a given focus area, we actually hit that. So who knew? Wow, we were, we were doing it right this whole time.
Now, here's one example of using the space framework. Uh, we're seeing this used several places across industry now. Lots of teams are starting to use this. Here's one example that I sort of personally like. So at GitHub, we wanted to kind of ask developers what their best day looks like. And this is interesting because this is specifically for an individual developer. This isn't for their eng manager. This isn't for a team. This isn't for an organization. So we wanted to help devs get really, really quick, easy signals into what makes a good day. Very individually focused, right? What makes a good day for me? And how could I help have a good day more often? Because sometimes it just escapes me, right? What's a good day? And so we use the space framework and we ask them a handful of questions based on space. So we asked them these questions at the end of the day. It was very quick. It was two minutes or less. And we also matched this to their GitHub activity data. Now they opted into this and they had reports that were only provided to them. So these questions were like, how was your work day? Uh, did you work with other people? Was your work interrupted? Um, did you feel most productive or least productive right like in the morning and in the afternoon? By the way, if you want to run, jump online, you can see the full question set as well as example reports. What we found is that folks really, really liked this, right? They loved that quick check at the end of the day. They said it felt like a nice kind of wrap up for the day and it helped them give them great insights. By the way, a couple of things that we found, minimal or no interruptions were this great way for developers to feel like they got a lot done. And if they had interruptions all throughout their day, it really kind of cut into their chances of having a good day. And like I said, this quick check-in really helped them. So by the way, a quick takeaway, even if you want to spend just a minute or two at the end of the day to reflect on what things worked, what things didn't, so many of our participants from the study continued doing this, even if it was just like a quick little journaling exercise. So here's my TLDR before we head into uh, open spaces. We can improve our work. We can use data to help us. Door and space are complementary frameworks. They can help us think holistically about our systems and how to improve them. And the thing I really like about this, especially with space, is that we can take a kind of a person and a user-based approach. We can, we can pull together space frameworks for people, for teams, for systems, but we can also focus it on people in particular. So thanks folks.